Okay, so it's good to know that there's this inverse relationship between n and theta. So let's say that light is going from water to air, um, and the problem will just tell you the index of refraction of water. If I remember correctly, water has an index of refraction of 1.33. Angle of incidence is 20 degrees. Let's find the angle of the transmitted light. So the first thing is to draw a nice, clear picture. First thing is to copy the problem, then we'll draw a nice, clear picture. So let's draw the incoming light. Okay. Now, where is the light starting here? From the water. Which I don't think quite matches your picture there. So it starts at the surface and then goes up towards the air. Right. Now the first thing is, it's most logical to imagine that the water is underneath and the air is above, because we're probably thinking about a pond or something. Let's try again. Let's draw the incoming light. Oh, let's draw the incoming light. Oh. So it would just be from water to air. That's right. So where is the incoming light coming from? The air. Oh, no, from the water. Right, so you were drawing the incoming light like this, but the incoming light should be coming from the water. Yeah. So the incoming light would look like this. All the previous pictures, I put the incoming light coming from above, but there's no reason why the question couldn't have the incoming light coming from below. This is light that maybe has reflected off the bottom of the pond, is now is, is emerging from the surface, or maybe it's reflected off a fish or something. Okay, uh, so here's our incoming light. All right, and now let's draw the outgoing light. Now, what's the index of refraction for this medium? Um, and, and what's the index of refraction for this medium? One. Right. Maybe we should call this N1 equals 1.33, because this is the first medium. And maybe we should call this N2 equals 1, because this is the second medium. So then when it goes into air, it has all right you read my mind that was what i was going to ask you that's right so before we can really draw the outgoing light we have to think about these indices of refraction or we don't know now how would you draw that light ray to reflect that good that's theta one angle of incidence is our theta one then it would be just further away from the so let's draw that might as well exaggerate it Excellent. Yeah. So we'll draw this maybe exaggerated. 
exaggerate even more. And we can call this theta 2. All right, that was a very good thought process when you worked out the angle. The only suggestion I would make is it's better to do that on paper rather than in our head. It's best to say, aha, this index is small, so this angle should be big. Just writing those two words makes it easier to check our work and make sure we're not making a mistake. This has the smaller index, so it has to have the bigger theta. That was the upshot of the work I erased here that showed the relationship here. So even without plugging into Snell's law, we know the qualitative relationship between the two angles over here. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, that would give us uh, that. All right. So the first step is just to draw a good picture. Um, and again, you have to think about where the incoming light is coming from and where the outgoing light is going to. It's going from the water to the air. Now what? The yeah. Did I give you my calculator? All right, now we were given this angle of 20 degrees. Right. Which variable are we setting equal to 20 degrees? Um, sine 1. Theta 1. Theta 1, sorry, yeah. I think that might not match what you have written down. I think down. I just, I had the thing flipped, the equation flipped. So I guess I just changed it. Oh, okay, I yeah, see. I'm sorry, I just so you had it right all along. Okay, good. The safest thing, we might as well build all the information we can into our picture. We should have just built this angle into our picture here. Okay, good. So, um, oh, so I got this wrong over here. This should have been 1.33 times sine of 20 equals 1 times sine of theta 2. Okay. Okay, good. So 1.33 times the sine of 20 was 0.45. And then you know to use the arc sine to figure out theta 2. And what did you get the arc sine was? Uh, now, does that match our prediction? Yes. Yeah. What would have not matched our prediction? If it was less than 20. Yeah, so that's kind of a check on our work. It's not that much bigger. So you can see I exaggerated in the picture. but. Uh, now we might as well put that in the picture. So this is 27 degrees, so obviously the picture didn't turn out to be at a scale. One thing to watch out for here is you've got to make sure you're in degrees mode. Was I in degrees mode? No, you weren't, yeah, but in the future, that's something to watch out for. Okay, so uh, good, so we figured out this was 27 degrees. So again, it's very, the easy way, way to get confused here is to plug the numbers in on the wrong side. It's probably uh, most uh, intuitive to put incidence right. on the left all right, and uh, refract on the right, because even though it didn't confuse you, it confused me. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, um, actually, usually, usually, whenever light hits the surface between mediums, usually when it hits the surface between mediums, some of it is transmitted and some of it is reflected. Usually you have both transmittal and reflection. So let's figure out the angle of the reflected light. And let's draw that reflected light in our picture.
Yeah, reflection is a lot easier, isn't it? The reflected light goes down like this, and we know that that angle is the same as the angle of incidence. So here's how it be reflected. So maybe now is a good time to start labeling a little bit more. Here's the reflected light, and here's the transmitted light, and here's the incoming light. Okay, so you've got all of these in the same uh, problem.